Today we're going to learn about how to grow black-eyed Susans. We'll talk about why it's a must-have for the garden and how to grow them from seed at home without expensive equipment. Native seeds need something called cold stratification. Cold stratification. Wait, 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 wait. Don't click away. Wait, wait, hold on. It's way easier than a saw. I promise it's super easy. It's February, which means it's go time for our native seeds. Isn't that kind of early? Not really. A lot of our North American plants need to be planted in the winter. They have like a timer inside that says they need to wait for the real spring. They're cautious. So grab your seeds and get ready to have way more plants than you can even give away. Oh, I'm going to struggle saying black-eyed Susans so many times. Is it easier to say Rudbeckia? There's a lot of different Rudbeckia species, but we're going to cover the ones that are the easiest to grow and the best for the home garden. She's a 10 out of 10 wow factor. In my opinion, the native plant garden is just not complete without black-eyed Susans because they're so impressive. These are for full sun. Some will grow okay in part shade, but in general, this is a prairie plant, not a woodland forest plant. So they like a lot of sun. I have all kinds of more unique flowers but when the black-eyed Susans are blooming, that's all anybody talks about. The deep gold color against the black center, it's extremely eye-catching. It draws everybody's attention like crazy. And that's important. Yes, as a native plant gardener, we're here to repair the removed ecosystem from our communities. But one of the most important species that we need to cater to is humans. For better or worse, we live in a society. If your garden looks amazing, your community is going to be so proud of you, and that's really motivating. I can't tell you how many times we've been out working in the garden, and people have pulled over to tell us how much they love the garden. They don't know it's 100% native plants. They don't know that my garden feeds 500 species of Lepidoptera. They just love what it does for the neighborhood. This is so encouraging. We want people to be excited about what we're doing. And when they see black-eyed Susans in full bloom, I'll tell you the gratitude from my neighbors is so uplifting and motivating when they see how good it looks they might be inspired to plant native plants too if you want to take your garden to the next level, you can plant Rudbeckia with anything purple that blooms at the same time. You've got contrasting colors on the color wheel, and it pops like crazy. A big grass, a purple flower, and black-eyed Susans together are just very naturally balanced. It's relaxing to look at these colors together. They have a long bloom time starting from July through August, and they really hold up in the winter garden too. They're not just a pretty face. Black-eyed Susans are native to these regions in the green, which in general means that when they're planted here, they're a 10 out of 10 on the low maintenance scale. So just like other native plants from here, they don't need fertilizer, tilling, compost, soil amendments, you don't have to add worm castings, and they don't need watering usually. Okay, so most new transplants do need watering the first month or six weeks after transplanting. But once these guys are established, they have their roots in the soil. Their root system is so crazy and fibrous, they almost never need supplemental water. Here's a video during a drought, and black-eyed Susans are not wilted. You can see the clay soil has huge cracks, and the black-eyed Susans are not wilted or brown. This is healthy foliage in this cracked clay soil. Here's a Rudbeckia herta growing and flowering in a crack in my driveway. So I don't want to hear people in the green areas here say that their soil won't support life. This is basically silt and paver base, like the gravel that's under the street. This is on a driveway that is getting pounded with hot sun all day. No shade at all. Is it the healthiest plant I've ever seen? Well, maybe not. But it's alive and it's flowering and it's making seed. I didn't plant it here. It's feeding the bees. She deserves an award. Not only are they low maintenance, but as a native plant, they feed so many species with their leaves, nectar, pollen, and seeds. Their seeds are eaten by turkey, quail, and songbirds. They also host butterfly caterpillars. Now hosting means they feed baby caterpillars, which is very special because caterpillars can't eat just any leaves. They can usually only eat a few host plants, and caterpillars are the best food for baby birds. Very nutritious. They like to live together with their plant friends, so in the wild they're usually found with these plants. Lead plant, sunflowers, rattlesnake master, that's a cool one. Euphorbia or flowering spurge. If you love learning about native plants, you can show YouTube that there's an audience for this by watching to the end of the video, subscribing, leaving a comment. These kinds of things let the world know that people are ready to start planting more native plants. So there's three types of black-eyed Susans I'd recommend for the home garden. The first one is Rudbeckia herta. This is a fuzzy stemmed, drought tolerant plant. It gets to be about three to four feet. See the hairy stems and thinner leaves? This is what tells you that the plant is probably drought resistant. 
Rudbeckia herta will reseed and give you more plants the second year, and then those plants will reseed, and then you'll have a lot of Rudbeckia the third year. But they eventually die down and let other plants take over, so you're going on a ride with Rudbeckia herta. I must have given away like 10 or 15 Rudbeckia herta last year. Those were plants that I didn't plant on purpose, and they just kind of showed up in areas that I didn't need them, so I was able to dig them out and give them away to my neighbors. The next one is Rudbeckia fulgata. This one is very reliable coming back every year. It does spread by rhizome, so it starts in like a small clump and then it just kind of grows out from there. It spreads out really nicely. Fulgata likes more medium soil. It's not as drought tolerant, but in my experience, it did totally fine in our last drought. But a drought in the Great Lakes isn't exactly the same as a drought in the Plains. If we're having a drought in Michigan, that doesn't exactly mean the same thing as having a drought in Oklahoma. Fulgata is compact. It's a little shorter than Herta, and that makes the blooms look like they're really close together and it looks really showy. If it likes it where it is, it can get big and spread out in a really big clump. You can let it grow out or you can dig up some of those extra plants and give them away or move them to other areas of the garden. Rudbeckia fulgata, especially the variety Goldsturm, has been extremely popular but it's very susceptible to something called septoria leaf spot. That's a plant disease where the leaves get covered in these black spots and it eventually can kill the plant. I also probably wouldn't plant 15 of them in a large mass because then if they got the disease, the whole row would be wiped out. We need diversity in the garden to strengthen it and give it resilience and protection from disease. The next one's really special. This is Rudbeckia subbentosa. It's also called Sweet Black-Eyed Susan. This one's taller. This one's like four to five feet. It's just a little bit more for a larger garden. It's great to mix with native grasses, like little blue stem, but I can't really recommend it for smaller gardens or for narrow spaces. Here I am with a Rudbeckia submentosa that I got from a friend. Like it's a beautiful plant, but as you can see, it's flopping over a little bit here. It's really opening up and that's because it's by itself. It's in a small place. This plant really needs to be with its friends, it needs to be with other plants and grasses, and it looks great there. I'm gonna finish up with just two Rudbeckias that I really like, but that are not a great choice for the city garden. Rudbeckia triloba. This is a part sun, part shade plant. It spreads really aggressively and it's great for a large area. If you have like a woodland area that's transitioning, so it's like half shade on the tree side, half sun, it has huge clusters of small yellow flowers and it's just royal in how showy and big it is. I wish I could have some of this on my property, I just don't have the space. The next one's Rudbeckia lacinata. This is also called wild golden glow. This one's like five or six feet tall. It's a part shade plant that does really well in wet areas. It's amazing, also extremely aggro, meaning it will create these huge stands of itself. I have a lot of respect for this plant and its aggressiveness. We're gonna talk about three ways to grow black-eyed Susan from seed. You can sow them in place in winter, right now. That just means put the seeds in contact with the ground. If there's snow and you can't see the ground, just throw them on the snow. There's always a risk that there'll be critters or birds might eat the seeds, but you can always protect them with a wire cage. You can winter sow. Winter sowing is when you plant the seeds inside a plastic cover of some kind that acts like a mini greenhouse. The greenhouse cover keeps the moisture inside so you don't have to water it all the time and the warmth makes them sprout a little bit earlier. It also acts as protection from critters so you don't have to build a cage. You don't have to buy any special kind of equipment. We're pretty low tech around here. We have this dog food container that we used to store bird seed and uh, unfortunately it fell and cracked. It's not really usable for bird seed anymore but you know what? I think we can use it for winter sowing. I'm just going to patch this up, make sure it's secure. This can become a perfect reuse for something that would otherwise end up in a landfill. You can use any kind of plastic container as long as it has drainage, is clear on the top to let the light in, and it has some kind of openings on the top to let the water in. Most people use plastic gallon water bottles or milk jugs. Two liter bottles also work. I think this is the easiest way. I'm also winter sowing in place, which is where you sow in the ground, but you put the plastic cover right on the ground where you're gonna grow the plants. It's important here that I've drilled holes on top to allow the water inside bricks or something heavy is necessary to prevent them from blowing away or getting removed by curious critters. You can also cold stratify them in the fridge for a few months and then plant them outside after your last frost date. To stratify in the fridge, the seeds need cold and moisture. Just storing them dry in the fridge is not enough. I just take the seeds and I put them in a moist paper towel. I put the paper towel in a plastic bag, label it, and put it in the fridge for the number of days it says on the seed packet. 
If I have a lot of seed or the seeds are really small, I like to put the seeds in a baggie or a jar with slightly moist vermiculite or perlite. When I add the water, I can see I only need a small amount for it to start clumping up and that's good. At the end of the 30 or 60 days, I remove them from the fridge and sow as usual in the ground or indoors under grow lights. For most black-eyed Susans or other perennial plants, they don't usually bloom in the first year. They'll look like a small plant like a dandelion rosette and then they'll bloom in the second year. If you really want flowers, you can buy plugs or pints, which are usually big enough to give you blooms late in the season. No matter what you're planting, if it's tomatoes or trees, all transplants need to be watered the first month or so. This really depends on the weather. If it's raining a ton, you might not really need to water it at all, but if there's a drought, you might be watering it three times a week. Unfortunately, nobody can really tell you how often to water. You really just have to look at the weather and how the soil is holding onto water. I always mulch my transplants the first year, no matter what, even in the vegetable garden. Two to four inches of mulch, straw, wood chips, the expensive stuff, just not rocks or weed fabric. If I don't mulch, the sun just beats on the soil and dries it out really fast. Mulch will prevent it from drying out and prevent weeds from growing until the plant is big enough to cover the ground on its own. In the garden, I like to put in a drift of plants. Five, seven, 13 plants. The closer you put them together, the better they keep out weeds. Okay, so what is a drift? In garden design, a drift is when you put a bunch of the same flowers in a group. Not in a row and not in a circle, but it, you kind of drift them throughout the garden. I put them in there in their own group so that it shows some intention in the garden. It looks designed. You're telling anyone who sees the garden that yes, I did this on purpose. There's nothing wrong with scattering seeds and having a very natural look to your garden, especially if your garden is large. Again, it just depends on the culture in your area. If you feel like your HOA is a little bit more on the strict side, I would start by making it look more cultivated and intentional versus naturalistic and wild. Neither one of these is better than the other, but if you're you're just starting out, sometimes it's easier to manage when you have a cluster of the same plant together. If you don't have time to grow from seed, Black Eyed Susans are available at most garden centers. A lot of them are cultivars, which just means they can look different from the original. And so sometimes pollinators get confused because they don't recognize the plant because it doesn't look the same. So try to find one that's as close to the original as possible. It's usually best to try to buy from native plant nurseries. Luckily, there are so many native plant nurseries that sell small plants online now. They usually have the most plants in stock in spring and fall. Sometimes in the middle of summer, it's hard to find plants. Joe from Grow It, Build It has put together a really great list of native plant nurseries in North America. This is a really valuable service they created collecting from their huge native plant community on Facebook. Growing plants from seed takes time and and gardeners get to learn a lot about patience from growing from seed, but it can be so rewarding to see your seedlings start to sprout. If you want to know what to expect from winter sowing, you can see my results from last year in this video.